So let's take a look at what we have here. These are pieces that I grabbed from my lumber rack, some scrap pieces of plywood left over from other projects. So I'll sketch up something real quick so I can build this for out of table. I'm anticipating that I'll build something probably about 16 high, 16 wide by about 10 inch deep. Now all of these plywoods are left over from previous projects. I don't have anything planned for them. So if I can turn these into a shop jig or a shop project, that's a win. Majority of the cuts were made on a table saw, but I assure you all of these cuts could be made using a circular saw. So I'm going to use this piece to make the fence. To make a cross cut using a circular saw, I'm using a speed square as a guide. And to make a rip cut, I'll be using the guide that comes with the circular saw. The fence here is quite simple. It's made up of two parts. You have the base and you also have the face. When it comes to the face of the fence, you can leave it as is, or you can cut off the corners like I'm doing here for aesthetics. For now, I'll glue these parts together and set them off to the side. The two parts I'm drilling here are for the base on the router table. They'll be glued and screwed, but I want to countersink the screws. You want to clamp the parts together before you drive the screws in. This way, nothing shifts. Now that glue is applied to the two sides, I need to line them up to the back. I'll drive a couple screws in through the back and into the sides, but I'll also do the same thing as I did for the base, which is countersink the heads of the screws. The only difference here is I'll use a dowel rod to plug the screw heads so you don't see them. To cover up the screw heads, I'll plug the hole using a dowel rod and cut those off using a flush cut saw. As the router table started taking shape, a few ideas came to mind. I figured a small bit storage would make a great addition. I put a marty cut on both sides of this small piece of wood. Now since I'm storing bits in this, I need to space them accordingly. If you know what you want to store in here, then you can space them perfectly for the bits you have. I'll leave wide spacing between them because I have no idea what I want to store in here at the moment. I want the router bits to sit straight up and down when they're not in use. So of course the holes need to be straight up and down or as straight as possible. While holding the piece of wood at an angle, I drilled in the face first, then lean the drill straight up and drill down. This will be glued in place, but right at the bottom. Now to attach the top to the bottom of the router table, I'll be using brackets. Of course, you can glue the top on and add screws, plug the holes and move on. But I wanted to use brackets so that I can take the top off and make cuts and adjustments to it if I need it. Possibly the toughest task here is to attach the router to the tabletop. You will need screws long enough to compensate for the thickness of the plywood. Or you can do what I did in a previous router table build video where I place a plate in the top of the router table. Once I picked the spot for where the router bit should protrude the router table, I drilled a hole that was the same size as the hole in the router base plate. Now I'll line up the plate 
right exactly where I want it to be and mark the holes. Now from the marked indications, you want to drill down and make sure the hole is below the surface. This way your material don't interfere with the screw heads. After drilling the first hole, which was about a quarter inch deep, I'll then switch over to a smaller bit and drive that all the way through. Now that I have the hole in the tabletop, I'll line the fence up to that and then I'll remove a section from the fence. This is easier to do when the parts are not assembled as here. All I have to work with is a quick sketch so I'll make an adjustment as I go. I drill the section out to remove the bulk of the material, then I'll use a chisel to clean it up. Going back to the router tabletop, I placed a couple pieces of wood here to act as a guide, then I placed a stop on one side of it so I can control where the router goes and doesn't. The way I have this laid out right now, this is the bottom of the router tabletop. For the first slot, I'm going to be using a small router bit that's the same size as the screw that I'm going to use here, and I'll go back and forth based on the indication that I marked on the router table. Every pass I make, I lower the router a bit more until I'm able to go all the way through. I'll then switch over to a larger router bit that's approximately the same size as the screw head. I'll pass over the same hole until I go down approximately a quarter inch deep, or slightly deeper than the thickness of the screw head. You'll need two of these slots on the router table. Once you have the slots in the router tabletop, you'll want to transfer the location of those over to the router fence. The holes in the router fence will cross the holes in the router table. You'll need this slot to go all the way through. Now as shown, I clamped a piece of wood on the router base, this so I can keep my focus more on the back and forth of the router instead of worrying about the side to side movement. Now after cutting this hole, I'll repeat the same thing on the other end. Now I'll line up the bottom of the router table to the top of it and install the screws to secure the bracket to the top. Depending on where you're using this, you more than likely want to catch some of the dust coming from the router. So I need to make some sort of housing to hold onto the router hose. After gluing these parts together and let it dry, I then drill the hole in the center but favoring it towards the bottom. The hole I'm drilling here fits the attachment to the vacuum hose. Now I'll apply wood glue and attach this to the fence. It may be tempting to open this hole all the way, but I can assure you the suction is strong. So now I'll sand this down to clean up the joints, the raised fibers on the plywood, clean up the edges, any saw marks that may be visible. I'll sand the entire table and also the fence. So I need to add one final detail and that's putting a small chamfer on the router fence. This way you don't have to fight with sawdust when you're trying to push your material through. Since this is a table on a budget, I won't paint it, but what I'll do is take some paste finishing wax, rub it on the top, also rub it on the router fence, and this way the two parts can interact with each other without much friction. So let's take a look at what we have here. On the back side of the router table, you have a storage in the lower bottom where you can stick some of your most used router bits. Routing this slot in allow for free movement of the router fence. Now, although you're building a router table, freehand routing may not be something you want to do, which in this case, you can use clamps to hold the fence down in place. Having the slot make it quite convenient. This way you don't have to worry about additional tools. You just simply screw these in place using wing nuts. This dust port make it very quick and convenient for the vacuum attachment that I have. You can use just about any router you want with a setup like this. I'm using a DeWalt cordless trim router. The design on this router made it quite convenient to use the center router table. With the exception to the power switch, just about everything else was on one side of the router. The speed adjustment, the tension release clamp, the depth adjustment, and also the battery.
With this router table, you can work just about anywhere. Even on the construction site. Even working off the back of a truck. This is probably not a good idea. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> 